Remember when you were little, and you used to think fairy tales were real? I have some news that is about to make your inner child very happy. A little birdie told me that the couple that might have inspired the Beauty and the Beast was real. The only thing we need to find out is if the movie was really based on their story or not. How about you be our guest, as we dive deeper into the origins of this beloved Disney movie. The year is 1537, and our story begins in the sunny center of Europe, the Canary Islands. The Canaries are home to outstanding natural attractions, and Canarios, the people who are born there, live their daily lives in the archipelago's pleasant climate. That year, a certain gentleman was born on the Canaries, and his destiny would be different from those of his fellow islanders. Meet Pedro Gonsalves. Pedro was born into a typical family, with a very rare congenital condition called hypertrichosis. If you've never heard of this before, hypertrichosis is a condition that can make someone look like a real-life werewolf, minus the howling part. It allows for hair to sprout excessively in places where hair wouldn't normally sprout. If in 2023 we still aren't sure of the causes of this disease, imagine people all the way back in the 1500s. Dermatologist Sarah Taylor says that throughout history, there have only been 50 documented cases of this condition. This is how rare Pedro's case was. The thing is, the excess facial hair made people look at Pedro differently. Records say he was called a wild man and was highly mistreated when he was a youngster. Ten years later, Pedro was put on a ship and sent to France as a gift to King Henry II. The king was about to be crowned, and it was normal for people to shower him with all kinds of presents. Little Pedro disembarked in the French city of Fontainebleau, where he moved into the king's castle. The entire court took interest in the boy as soon as he mm -hmm. arrived. The castle's academics and doctors asked to study him closely, hoping to figure out if he was really a wild mm -hmm. man. Soon enough, they understood that Pedro was just a 10-year-old boy. The boy even told them his name, which the French then changed to Petrus Gonsalves. The court communicated the news to King Henry II, and the king immediately ordered that the boy be given a proper education. As you're probably already thinking, Petrus's life changed completely at that moment. Just like Belle's life changed once she got trapped in the Beast's castle in the beloved Disney movie. But life in King Henry II's palace was very different for Petrus than it was for Belle. If the Disney princess got to befriend talking ceramics and wear beautiful silk dresses, Petrus needed to go to school on a daily basis. To the surprise of the court and his teachers, the boy excelled in Latin, which is no easy feat. During his life, he even became fluent in three languages. Now Belle and Petrus did have one thing in common. They both had to learn etiquette. Remember how Lumiere did his best to teach Belle the ways of the palace? Perhaps we can say that it was similar for Petrus, except for the fact that it was probably a human that taught him what he needed to learn. The king became impressed and soon Petrus was a frequent presence in the court. For the first time in his life, he would dress like a nobleman and take part in the court's social activities. But still, records show Petrus was never considered fully human due to his congenital disease. In 1559, King Henry II passed away, and Catherine de' Medici, his wife, took over the palace. If in the Disney version of the tale there is an infamous evil witch that curses the prince to become a beast, in this story, there is a not-so-kind queen. As far as records show, Queen Catherine de' Medici decided to arrange a marriage between Petrus and another gal, also named Catherine. Let's call her Kathy, so we don't get too confused. The thing is, the queen didn't tell Kathy of Petrus' <laughs> congenital condition, which doesn't sound too cool to me, huh? Kathy was the daughter of one of the court's royal servants, and as was the practice back then, when a queen told you to marry someone, you usually did. So Kathy didn't question the fact that she hadn't met Petrus, or knew nothing about him before the wedding. One can only imagine Kathy's surprise when, on her wedding day, she discovered who Petrus really was. There is no official record of her reaction, although rumor has it that Kathy wasn't too happy initially. But this story has a plot twist that Queen Catherine could never have imagined, and this plot twist is the cheesiest of them all, love. Like in the Disney fairy tale, Beauty, a.k.a. Kathy, found that true love was hidden way deep beneath the surface, and that Petrus's exterior appearance was only a small aspect of who he was. Perhaps Queen Catherine could never have imagined that the real Beauty and the Beast 
would be married for nearly 40 years. They would even have children. Nobody knew if the couple's children would be born with Petrus's condition, so it was a surprise when their first child was born without it. The couple had seven children in total, and four of them did inherit Petrus's hypertrichosis. The Gonsalves family became a huge attraction in France's court. They became known as the Wild Family and spent the rest of their lives touring through Europe. Natural scientists were interested in studying the Gonsalves children, trying to better understand the ones born with hypertrichosis. Many portraits were painted of the family during the years they toured the European continent. But many say that they were always seen as an attraction rather than regular human beings. This makes one wonder, did Petrus and Kathy get their happy ending? We know that all Disney movie characters live happily ever after. But how true was that for the real life Beauty and the Beast? Records were so fascinated with figuring out if Petrus was human or a wild man that there is not much about his life beyond that fact. In the original tale that inspired the movie, Beauty and the Beast also find a happy ending. Written by Gabrielle Suzanne Villeneuve in 1740, the original tale is said to be inspired by Petrus and Kathy's story. But maybe, this tale is really as old as time and was born even before Petrus. You see, historians have collected over 23 variations of the Beauty and the Beast story around the world and over 162 versions of the animal bridegroom story archetype. If this word doesn't mean anything to you, let's take a step back for a second. Fairy tales usually follow some archetypal structure. This means that they tend to reflect the human psyche as a way for us to understand some of our behaviors and feelings. In fact, some fairy tales should be called just tales, as there is nothing fairy-like about them. If you've ever read The Brothers Grimm or Hans Christian Andersen, you know what I mean. The animal bridegroom story trope usually shows a woman marrying an animal-like human that turns out to be a prince living under a curse. And some say this trope dates all the way back to the 1500s. The Disney movie never sets a historical date for the Beauty and the Beast story. From the outfits worn, some people say it's set around the 1700s, which would be the epic that Villeneuve's tale represents, rather than Petrus's time period. All we know is that, if this was inspired by the Gonsalves family life, Villeneuve twisted quite a few things. If in the movie, Belle breaks the beast's curse with the power of true love, in real life, that's not what happened to Petrus. There was no evil witch cursing him. He would never be able to get rid of his condition. The turning point of this story would be if society would have accepted him as he was, and perhaps never have called him a beast to begin with. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.